ever wonder how those noise canceling headphones work? Like, how do they actually cancel the noise? Or um, why do you think soap bubbles have those like crazy colors, you know? Well, get ready, because today we're diving into interference. And our guide for this deep dive is none other than, you guessed it, Richard Feynman. Specifically, we're looking at excerpts from his lectures on physics, volume one, chapter 29. Electromagnetic waves are gonna be our jam today, but trust me, this stuff goes way beyond just light. All right, so Feynman, he doesn't mess around. He jumps right in, talking about a single electric charge, just vibing, and then bam, it suddenly accelerates. And that right there, that's where the magic happens. That acceleration, it's like it creates this disturbance, this ripple in the electromagnetic field, and it just spreads out, you know, like, like ripples in a pond when you throw a rock in. Feynman, he calls this disturbance a snapshot. It's like the universe hit the pause button on the speeding electron and captured its image. A cosmic Polaroid. I like it. And that snapshot, that ripple, that's what we experience as an electromagnetic wave. Radio waves, light, even x-rays, it all comes back to these accelerating charges. So, okay, we've got this wave, right? And it's going outward. So naturally you'd think, well, the energy has got to decrease the further it travels. Like think about it, the further you are from a radio tower, the weaker the signal, right? You're getting it. You're getting it. The intensity does decrease. That's true. But here's the kicker. The total energy within a cone, like a cone of energy extending outwards from the source, it actually stays the same. Wait, so the energy is not disappearing. It's just, what, spreading out? Bingo. Remember those ripples in the pond? Yeah. Yeah, they get weaker as they expand, but the total energy from that initial splash is yeah. still there, just spread out over a larger area. Okay, now that makes sense. So how do we even start to make sense of all these waves and their energy? Every wave has its own thing. You know, yeah. like its own personality. Yeah. And to understand that personality, we got to get familiar with its wavelength and frequency. Right. Time for a little vocab lesson. Frequency tells us how many times a wave oscillates, you know, goes up and down every second. Basically, how wiggly it is. And wavelength, that's the distance between two corresponding points on the wave. Like, picture the crest of a wave. Yeah. Wavelength is the distance from one crest to the next. Just like measuring between the peaks of those ripples we were talking about. And here's the mind-blowing part. Wavelength multiplied by frequency always equals the speed of light. Always. It's constant. That relationship is everything. It means if we change the frequency, the wavelength has to change too, just to keep that speed constant, a cosmic balancing act. Okay, so we've got one wave figured out, but Feynman, he doesn't stop there. He wants to know what happens when these waves collide. Cue the oscillating antennas, our very own wave-making machines. And here, my friend, is where the magic truly begins. Picture two antennas just humming away, sending out radio waves. Now, depending on where they are and if their signals are in sync or in phase, those waves can either get bigger or cancel each other out completely. So it's like synchronized swimming, but for electromagnetic waves. You got it. Let's say our antennas are half a wavelength apart and totally in sync. Mm. Now, in the direction perpendicular to the line that connects them, boom, super strong signal. Their peaks line up, making each other stronger. But go directly north or south of our antenna buddies. Silence, total silence. Their signals are hitting each other out of phase and they just cancel each other out. It's like pushing a swing at the wrong time. You get nowhere. Oh. So we can control where that signal is strong or weak just by changing how far apart the antennas are. Exactly. And it's not just distance. We can tweak the timing of those signals too, just slightly, and steer that signal wherever we want. We call that adjusting the phase. So with a little wave choreography, we can like direct the signal. That's pretty cool. But where does all this like actually show up in real life? Where's the interference? Well, remember those noise canceling headphones you were wondering about? They're basically like little physics labs in your ears using interference to keep the world out. Okay, now you've got my attention. How do they do that? They fight fire with fire or I guess noise with anti-noise. Those headphones have these tiny microphones, right? Yeah. And they pick up all the sounds around you, traffic, people talking, all that. And then, get this, they actually generate sound waves that are perfectly out of sync with those sounds. So it's like what? Sending in one wave of soldiers to fight another waves, but, you know, with sound? Exactly. And when those waves collide, boom, they cancel each other out, destructive interference, and what do you get? Silence. That's wild. I always thought it was like some super thick foam or something in the ear cups, but it's just waves. Waves, my friend. <laughs> elegant. Right. And speaking of elegant, let's switch gears from sound to sight for a sec. Ever wonder how a soap bubble gets those crazy colors? 
or like that shimmery rainbow effect on a CD. Oh, yeah. I always thought that was like magic or something, but you're going to tell me it's just physics, aren't you? Busted. It's all about light interfering with itself. See, when light hits something like a soap bubble, which is really just a thin film of, you know, soapy water, yeah. some of that light bounces right off the top. But some of it, it goes through, travels a bit further, and then bounces off the bottom surface of the film. So now I've got two sets of light waves, both bouncing back at us. What happens then? Time for those waves to have their own little interference party. But here's the thing. Different wavelengths of light, which we see as different colors, they interfere differently depending on how thick that soap film is. So the thickness of the film is like a filter, kind of. It yeah. decides which colors get amplified and which ones get, like, canceled out exactly some wavelengths will line up perfectly right you get this bright burst of color other wavelengths might totally cancel each other out and that color just disappears from what you see so that crazy rainbow on a soap bubble it's really just showing us all the different interference patterns from all the different colors of light you got it and as the angle changes or even if that film changes thickness just a tiny bit those interference patterns shift around that's why you see those mesmerizing swirls of color Wow, interference is everywhere. But before we go too far, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, diffraction. That's how light bends when it goes through small spaces, right? Like around corners. You got it. Diffraction is all about interference. In fact, Feynman actually compares how radio waves act with multiple antennas to how light behaves when we shine it through something called a diffraction grating. Basically, it's a plate with a bunch of tiny slits in it, all parallel. Okay, so what happens to the light when it hits this grating thing? Picture this. You shine a light through one of those tiny slits. What would you expect to see on the other side? A bright spot, right? Makes sense to me. But here's the wild part. You actually get a pattern of bright and dark spots. That's because when those light waves squeeze through that tiny slit, they spread out, that's the diffraction part, and then they start interfering with each other. So each slit is like a tiny antenna sending out its own waves. Now you're getting it. And just like our antennas where those waves overlap, you get interference. In phase, bright spot, yeah. out of phase, dark spot. This is blowing my mind. So we're not just talking about noise canceling headphones and pretty soap bubbles here. Interference helps us understand how light itself works. You're catching on and it gets even cooler. These same ideas, they don't just apply to light. We're talking sound waves, water waves, even the waves that describe how tiny particles behave, like the building blocks of matter. Wait, seriously? Like atoms and stuff? They're doing the wave dance, too. You better believe it. But that, my friend, is a deep dive for another day. Ah, uh, you're killing me. All right, fine. But you did promise we'd talk about why any of this matters. Why should we care about interference? You're right. It's easy to get lost in the how and forget about the why. But get this understanding, interference isn't just about, you know, understanding the universe. It's led to some seriously cool tech. Like what? Give me some examples. For starters, our whole modern world runs on our ability to control these electromagnetic waves. And we wouldn't be able to do that without understanding interference. Radio, TV, GPS, even things like medical imaging, all thanks to our understanding of interfering waves. Whoa, I never thought of it like that. But that's all stuff that already exists. What about the future? What could understanding interference help us create? Now that's where things get really interesting. Researchers are looking at how to use interference to build even more advanced tech. Like imagine computers that use quantum mechanics that could change everything from medicine to material science, or even new ways to communicate that make the internet look like, like a clunky old telegraph. So what you're saying is, by wrapping our heads around these kind of crazy physics concepts, we're not just like figuring out how the universe works, but we're also setting the stage for a future we can barely even imagine. Exactly. And who knows what other amazing stuff is out there just waiting for us to discover it, right? So we've gone from those noise canceling headphones to like the way soap bubbles shimmer and shine, all thanks to interference. But something tells me we're going even deeper, right? We were talking about light and diffraction. We're just getting started. What if I told you that the way those radio waves were acting with our antennas, that's basically how light works all the time. Wait, are you saying that light, like the light we see, is just a bunch of tiny antennas going off at once? You're closer than you think. Remember those antennas? We could, like, manipulate the signal by placing them carefully and messing with their timing. Now imagine, instead of just two, we have countless tiny sources, all spitting out electromagnetic waves, 
each one slightly out of sync with the others. Okay, now I'm picturing a stadium full of those antennas all going crazy. That just sounds like chaos. Organize chaos. When you have all those waves from all those sources interfering with each other in just the right way, that's what we see as a beam of light. The light from your lamp, sunlight, it's all the same. Whoa, so a single beam of light is actually like a zillion waves all interfering with each other. My mind is officially blown. And it gets even wilder. Because those sources aren't perfectly in sync, their waves are constantly interfering, constructively and destructively. And actually what gives light its wave-like nature is how light can bend around stuff, creating those diffraction patterns we talked about. So this whole deep dive into interference, it's not just some abstract physics thing. It's about understanding how light itself works, how it interacts with, well, everything. Exactly. Interference isn't just some phenomenon. It's a fundamental principle of the universe. It literally shapes our reality from the colors we see to the technology we use. So to wrap things up, it seems like interference is behind so much of what we just like take for granted. Noise canceling, pretty colors, even the nature of light itself, it's everywhere. That's the beauty of physics, right? Finding these hidden connections and realizing how interconnected everything is. It makes you wonder what other secrets are out there just waiting to be discovered. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive into interference. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing, and we'll catch you on the next deep dive.